Okay, so today we're very happy to have uh, Sung Sik Lee from McMaster University and Perimeter Institute, who will be telling us about uh, field theoretic functional RG formalism for non Fermi liquids. Okay, um, uh, thank you for the invitation and allowing me to uh, speak over the Zoom. Um, so today I will uh, talk about uh, low energy effective theories for um, from liquids. And um, the talk is based on uh, this, this work um, uh, in collaboration with uh, Francisco Borges and Anton Borisov. Uh, Francisco and Anton are PhD students at McMaster and Ashu Simi. Uh, Ashu was a postdoc here and now at Texas A&M. And Andres Schrift was a former PhD student. Okay, so, um, uh, so in metals, um, if there is no interaction, um, then we know that the ground state is given by the form C. Uh, now, if uh, interactions are turned on, then uh, particles can exchange momentum, and uh, the form C is in principle not rigid. But uh, fermions deep in the form C are inert, but these uh, particles near the form surface are are in principle subject to uh, quantum fluctuations. However, remarkably, in form liquids, even in the presence of uh, uh, rather strong interactions, uh, particles close to the form surface have long lifetime, and therefore, uh, many of the eigenstates are still labeled by the occupation number of single particle states, what we call quasi-particle states. And as a result, uh, the low energy effective theory, when it is written in, in, in terms of the occupation number of quasi-particle, um, become classical. Uh, but in general, um, one has to deal with the uh, more general form of interacting theories. Um, that do not, when, when metals do not have a quasi particle description. And uh, those so called uh, non form liquid states um, arise uh, frequently, I mean, near, near quantum critical points. So uh, if um, there's a quantum phase transition inside metal, say some symmetry is uh, spontaneously broken. And um, as, as you tune some coupling in, in the Hamiltonian, and if the phase transition is a continuous transition, then at the critical point, um, there exist uh, some gapless uh, collective modes. Uh, uh, in addition to the gapless particle horror excitations present near the form surface, and um, if the coupling between the collected mode and the uh, formulating mode is strong enough, then um, uh, this uh, formulating mode no longer have long lifetime, and uh, we don't have uh, quasi-particle description. Uh, although there have been a lot of uh, interesting progress in the past 20, 30 years, uh, there are still um, uh, many outstanding questions. Um, and um, first, um, in layered compounds in two space dimension, uh, the theories for non form liquids are often uh, take the form of um, strongly coupled field theory. So that's the uh, usual strong coupling problem in low dimensional system. Uh, but more importantly, um, we would like to have a general framework um, for low energy effective theories with uh, infinitely many gapless modes because in metals, the 
on the surface is um, extended in the momentum space and therefore gapless modes can be created anywhere near the forming surface. And formally that corresponds to continuously many gapless degrees freedom. And um, uh, we need to have some um, systematic uh, theoretical framework uh, for those theories. And um, the goal of this talk is to address uh, these, these issues. And um, um, although this um, uh, strong coupling problem, the solution to the strong coupling problem uh, is probably specific to some types of non from liquid. Um, uh, the second issue is more, more um, general one. And uh, I'd like to um, uh, talk about this general framework uh, using the example of the non form liquid state that arises at the anti ferromagnetic multi quantum critical point in two space dimension. Uh, it, it happens that in this particular theory, one can also solve the strongly coupled field theory, so we can address the, we can actually understand um, what happens uh, to the theory in the low energy limit uh, in, 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 in detail, actually. And um, so here is the setup. Suppose I have a, a metal in two space dimension with a, a, a C4 symmetry, with fourfold uh, rotation symmetry and some reflection symmetry. And um, suppose we tune some um, coupling in the Hamiltonian and uh, metal undergoes uh, continuous uh, phase transition uh, where uh, um, the ground state uh, breaks the spin rotation symmetry as spin uh, develops some spin density wave. Okay, so here phi is the uh, all the parameter um, where uh, spins acquire some uh, non-zero expectation value with a spatial modulation. But for simplicity, we are going to consider the case where um, this anti ferromagnetic order is collinear, breaking the SO3 rotation symmetry, spin rotation symmetry into O2. And also we are going to consider the case where the uh, magnetic ordering vector that determines the spatial modulation of the spin density wave is commensurate. For example, in high TC, uh, the ordering vector is pi pi, and this is what we are going to consider. And, uh, and then in the order of the phase, um, the translation symmetry is broken and unicell become bigger. So therefore the brilliant zone is folded and at the boundary of the brilliant zone, uh, the gap opens and the forming surface is reconstructed. Uh, but our, the focus of, uh, of this talk is this quantum critical point and we want to understand the low energy properties of the metal that is realized at the, at the critical point. Uh, by the way, uh, please interrupt me anytime, uh, either through chat or, or uh, question during the talk. So, uh, so um, the most popular approach to the study of non form liquid um, has been the so-called patch theory. And um, the idea of patch theory is to break the forming surface into uh, small patches whose size is order of the energy scale that you probe, okay? And then isolate the patches that remain most strongly coupled with each other and uh, uh, consider only those small number of patches without uh, considering and the residual interaction uh, with other patches, okay? And uh, 
for this uh, anti ferromagnetic quantum critical matter, the patch theory uh, goes by the name of uh, Haspa theory. Okay, so the reason is that uh, at the critical point, we have this um, gapless uh, collective mode, the, the uh, spin fluctuation become gapless as some non zero wave vector, say pi pi. That's, that's the wave vector where the order forms. Okay. And, uh, and therefore, um, in order for electron, low energy electron on the Fermi surface to absorb those gapless, uh, the, the low energy spin fluctuation and uh, scatter into uh, other parts of the Fermi surface, those fermion has to be at some specific points on the Fermi surface because uh, there are only uh, the specific so-called hotspot that are connected by this uh, anti-ferromagnetic ordering vector. So here, these blue lines represent uh, say pi pi ordering vector. And these red points are the points on the Fermi surface connected by this Q vector, right? And then away from this hotspot, in order for the electron to interact with the uh, uh, spin fluctuation, it has to either um, absorb or emit uh, collective mode with uh, momentum away from pi pi, or it has to scatter into a state away from the Fermi surface. So therefore, one may focus on only on those electronic degrees freedom near the hot spot. Um, and that's the hot spot theory. So here I have written down the action. So here, capital N refers to eight hotspot. So uh, with this uh, simply connected uh, Fermi surface, there are eight points connected by this Q vector and sigma is spin. So let's say NC is general, but let's say NC equal two for, for SU2 spin. And NF is flavored, let's just say, set it to one, okay? And then um, this is the electron uh, field. Um, and then this K is the, okay, so this K zero is the frequency and this K is the momentum uh, measured away from the hotspot, okay? And uh, I have written down the kinetic term for um, each patch near the hotspot where the size of the patch is order of the energy scale, okay? Um, and then here E, of N is the linearized kinetic energy of electron near hotspot N. For example, near hotspot one here, <clears throat> uh, say the Fermi vector, Fermi, Fermi velocity is pointing along some direction denoted by this red arrow. And then here I can choose some local coordinate system where uh, Kx is uh, in the direction perpendicular to the Q vector here then ky is in the direction parallel to the q vector. And I can always choose my scaling of momentum such that Fermi velocity along the q vector is one. And then this v, little v, denote the Fermi velocity that is perpendicular to the q vector. So near hotspot one, uh, the linearized dispersion of electron is given by dkx plus ky. And then, Dispersion at other hotspots are fixed by the symmetry. Okay, here I haven't included nonlinear term because um, I'm expanding near the hotspot. Okay, and then um, and then this phi, the second line is the kinetic term of the gapless uh, spin fluctuation. So for here uh, the collective spin mode is in the, the adjoint representation of SU2 or in general SUNC uh, spin. So it, it can be written as a matrix field uh, where tau A is a SUNC generator and uh, uh, this is the field. In the user SU2 case, I have three components of the uh, uh, collective mode and here, Q is the 
momentum measured away from the pi pi vector. So q equals zero, at which the spin fluctuation has zero energy, actually represent the momentum pi pi. And here C is the uh, velocity of spin fluctuation. And then here we have the yukawa like coupling between the electron and uh, spin fluctuation, where say fermion in hotspot four with momentum K can absorb the um, collective mode with the momentum Q and scatter into uh, a state with momentum K plus Q near the hotspot one, okay? So you have to sum over all pairs of the hotspot connected by the Q vector um, and that's the best you call a copy. And here, um, um, under the scaling that leaves the kinetic term of the fermion and boson invariant, uh, this Yukawa coupling is uh, relevant. So in the low energy, the Yukawa coupling become order of one and you, you lose control at, at, at low energies. So that's the user strong coupling problem in this, in this uh, hotspot theory. Um, uh, however, it turns out that the theory is solvable. The strongly coupled field theory is solvable in the limit that uh, V is small. Here, remember the V, this V uh, represent the Fermi velocity that is perpendicular to the Q vector uh, measured in the unit of the Fermi velocity that is parallel to the Q vector. And in general, V is non-zero, but if V was zero, that means the pair of the hotspot connected by the Q vector become uh, nasty, become uh, anti parallel to, to each other. So for that reason, we call V a uh, nasty angle. And it turns out this uh, theory is solvable in the small v limit, okay? Uh, so you can show that um, in the limit that the nesting angle is small, all quantum correction that survives can be summed over through this uh, uh, schwinger dyson equation. It's like a RPA, but with some vertex correction, where this double line represent the fully dressed uh, propagator of the collecting mode. So small V limit is not same as the small Yukawa coupling limit. This is um, a, a non-perturbative limit, but uh, it turns out that in that limit, uh, the leading order correction can be included through this uh, schwinger dyson equation. And then the next order, from the next order, quantum correction, the remaining quantum correction can be included order by order in the nesting angle. It's like a um, um, small Fermi velocity extension, if you, if you want. Okay. And, uh, uh, and those uh, subleading correction actually make the nesting angle flow to zero at low energy, low horizontality. So what that means is that if you start with a bare theory where the nesting angle is non-zero but small, under the RG flow, the nesting angle becomes smaller and smaller. And this uh, small nesting angle expansion becomes more and more accurate. So for this reason, this small nesting angle expansion become asymptotically exact in the low energy limit. And uh, within this patch theory, the, flow, the theory flows to a fixed point at low energy. And uh, the fixed point is characterized by uh, zero nesting angle and some uh, non-zero anomalous dimension where the boson has anomalous dimension one and dynamical critical exponent one. Okay. Um, however, uh, this conclusion um, 
it's not complete because the patch theory is not uh, including the all gapless mode on the foamy surface. Um, and um, uh, as a result, um, the patch theory doesn't capture uh, momentum dependent uh, critical properties. For example, um, in general, you can imagine that um, electrons acquire some anomalous dimension that depends on the momentum along the foamy surface. And patch theory is not capable of uh, capturing those uh, momentum dependent uh, critical properties. More importantly, the patch theory is blind to superconducting instability. Uh, and the reason for that is that um, according to the patch scaling, under the scaling in which the patch theory is invariant, the four fermion coupling uh, is irrelevant and therefore is not included in the patch theory. However, it turns out that this four fermion coupling give rise to um, IR singularities, although it is uh, irrelevant by power counting. It give rise to IR singularities and, and give rise to superconducting instabilities. So in other words, you cannot really understand the low energy physics of the theory without including uh, this four fermion coupling that are deemed irrelevant under the patch theory. So that means um, uh, uh, there's something uh, wrong with the patch theory. In particular, a uh, certain coupling that have a uh, negative scaling dimension under the patch theory doesn't mean that they are irrelevant for, for the actual, uh, actual, actual physics. Okay? They can still give rise to IR similarities. So, um, so the goal is to go beyond the patch theory and um, consider the full low energy effecting theory that includes all gapless modes around the foamy surface. And in this case, uh, the coupling constant, say you call a coupling or the nesting angle, foamy velocity, they all should be promoted to coupling functions. Okay, along the along the momentum as a function of momentum along the foamy surface. So uh, can you explain again how um, usually, usually negative scaling dimension means that the coupling is irrelevant. We just can compute correction to any physical quantity due to the operator with this uh, dimension that comes with the coupling constant with negative I mentioned, and it's suppressed by uh, C by the this coupling times the cutoff to some power. So, some somewhere the argument breaks down. That's right. So the the reason why that argument breaks down is because of the KF, the size of the surface, does not decouple in the low energy. So the effective coupling is not just the uh, four fermion coupling itself, some combination of the four fermion coupling and KF. And the KF has a dimension, active scaling dimension. So that composite object sometimes acts like a um, marginal or marginally relevant uh, coupling. So the short answer is that there's a, uh, there's a scale in the problem, which is, uh, it's, it's not the high energy scale. It's uh, KF is kind of large momentum, but low energy scale. So I will actually um, say more on this point uh, uh, in a few slides. Hi, Sansik. May I have another question? Uh, the previous one, uh, previous slides. Are you claiming uh, another previous point? Uh, so are you claiming that uh, the, the theory is always flowing to a perfect nesting? Is that a physical fixed point? I mean... Here? Yeah, yeah. Oh, so, okay. So the patch theory predicts that. 
So if you just believe the Penn's theory, then the prediction is that the theory flows to a um, uh, stable IR fixed point with the uh, zero nesting angle. Okay. So it may, may, maybe my question is: Are you claiming that the curvature of the Fermi surface is going to be normalized or not? Curvature of the Fermi surface. Yeah. Okay. So the patch theory is not um, uh, cannot capture the momentum dependence of of how the the nesting angle changes as a function of momentum. So you have to include the momentum dependence and then you will see that uh, in general the forming surface become kind of curved okay so the, the prediction of the patch theory is that at the hot spot the nesting angle local nesting angle local slope flows to zero right at the hot spot as you go to low energy that's the prediction of the uh hot spot theory but uh it doesn't happen away from the hotspot, okay? If you are away from the hotspot, the, the, the slope of the forming surface is not parallel to the, you know, mm -hmm. to the slope of the forming surface at the hotspot. <laughs> yeah, well, this point also I will say a little more later. Okay, okay thank you. Yeah. Okay, so, in the full theory that includes all gapless modes, the coupling constants should be promoted to coupling functions. And the natural framework is functional RG. And, uh, and we have, uh, say, uh, exact RG equation that keep track of the flow of the momentum dependent vertex function. So in principle, uh, this formalism is powerful enough to capture the momentum dependent properties of the uh, theory near the forming surface. However, uh, this exact RG equation is usually very hard to solve because uh, it retains uh, a lot of non-universal information at general momentum, okay? But uh, for the low energy physics, we don't really care about what happens far away from the forming surface. Right. We, we are mainly interested in the physics near the forming surface. So uh, we should be able to um, throw away a lot of momentum dependence that has to do with the momentum perpendicular to the forming surface and keep only those information uh, along the forming surface. Okay. And, uh, and uh, um, so th that's the framework that we need, a framework of some a form of functional RG that keeps the universal low energy data uh, near the forming surface, okay? So, so um, we called it a uh, field theory functional RG um, and the uh, um, main object of, of this uh, fun field theory functional RG is a renormalizable field theory. So in relativistic field theory, um, we are familiar with uh, this notion of renormalizable field theory. Uh, it describes the same IR physics uh, within a universality class. That's in a, in a minimal way, right? So uh, we have a notion of universality class and the theories that differ from each other by irrelevant coupling flow to the same IR fixed point. And among all these theories, there's a, simplest theory of uh, uh, that captures the same IR physics. So that is the usual renormalizable field theory. Okay? More, more generally, uh, renormalizable field theory is a theory that includes the minimal set of coupling functions in our context, in terms of which all low energy observables at energy scale mu can be expressed within errors that goes to zero as a power law power of the ratio between the, our energy scale mu to some UV cutoff energy. Okay. So this is kind of a more general definition of uh, reno renormalizable field theory. And indeed, this definition translates into the usual one in relativistic field theory, where you keep only the operators whose dimension is 
equal or less than to the space-time dimension. Okay. But, um, but that definition is not uh, good enough uh, in, in math types. So the more, that's why we, we use this more general uh, definition. Okay. Um, in particular, uh, in the presence of uh, Fermi momentum, I mean, the, the extended Fermi surface, a renormalizable field theory can include couplings that have negative scaling dimension. The example, the, 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 in part, the four fermion coupling has a scaling dimension minus one. However, we should include it within, within the renormalizable field theory because without it, we cannot, we cannot um, capture the low energy physics within this uh, power law accuracy. Okay. Because this uh, four fermion coupling actually give rise to logarithmic similarity at low energy. Okay. So therefore we should include it in the, in the low energy effective theory, despite the fact that it has negative scaling dimension. Okay. You cannot construct <laughs> the renormalizable theory just based on the scaling dimension. Uh, Sang can I ask a question? Sure. So I, I, I don't understand which aspect of, say, the Polchinski RG that you're not happy with. I, I would have said that he dismisses, you know, UV stuff, keeps IR functions as well. Well, the, the, um, um, yeah, I mean, the, the point is that um, still, um, there are a lot of uh, information that has that are that depends on momentum in the um, in the direction perpendicular to the form so. mm -hmm. Okay, so you're uh, I see you're, you're saying it has a little too much information. Yeah, that's right. But it, it does keep this for for me. Yeah, term. I mean, it, 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 it is. Uh, actually, in fact, it finds that it's marginal, right? It wouldn't like he wouldn't say that it's dimension minus one. I mean, yeah, I mean, exact, this is exact RG equation. So they will keep right. uh, everything, but maybe too much. Okay, so you would like these, th th for example, this B this BCS coupling to only depend on angles and not the full momentum. That's right, not full momentum. Right? Okay. So the idea is to keep the all low energy information, but uh, only the low energy information. Mm -hmm. So patch, patch theory doesn't include all low energy information, okay? And uh, some, yeah. So, so exactly. patch has too little and Polchinski has too much is, is what you're That's saying. That's right, yeah. yeah. So uh, on the next slide, I was wondering how you're defining uh, scale dimension. Um, is it just the naive canonical scale dimension of a two plus one dimensional fermion? So this scaling dimension is the scaling dimension uh, at the IR fixed point of the patch theory. Okay, so it happens that um, at the IR fixed point, the boson has anomalous dimension one, but the fermion has anomalous dimension zero. So therefore, uh, the scaling dimension of four fermion operator also has no anomalous dimension. So can use three level dimension. But yeah, and um, and then under that uh, scaling patch theory is invariant, okay, and uh, and and then the four fermion coupling is has dimension minus one under that uh, scaling uh, analysis. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay, so. Why does this discrepancy arise? Uh, discrepancy between the what is inferred from the scaling dimension and the actual degree of IR directly. Okay, so that is question, and uh, that is due to the forming momentum KF. Okay, so for example, suppose I look at um, the contribution of the four fermion coupling here. So here I singled out. The, the pairing channel where say incoming momentum is K minus K and outgoing momentum Q minus Q. And think about the process where this kind of four fermion coupling renormalized some, uh, some general operators, 
Okay, so this uh, there are some n number of legs, okay, which we don't care. But anyway, this four fermion coupling contribute to the anomalous dimension of this uh, general operator through this kind of blue process, okay. And here, uh, when the external momentum happens to be k and minus k on the opposite side of the form surface, then through this interaction, these two fermions can scatter into uh, Q and minus Q, and then Q and minus Q can be anywhere on the Fermi surface. And because the Fermi surface, as far as there's a time reversal symmetry, you know, when Q is on the Fermi surface, minus Q is automatically on the Fermi surface. And um, uh, we have to sum over Q. And then there's no energetic penalty for large Q, as I said, because the Fermi surface is extended. Uh, so, so therefore, the phase space of these low energy fermions is controlled not by the external energy, but by KF, okay? And therefore, what actually controls the anomalous dimension of this operator is not lambda times some energy scale mu, right? As uh, Son suggested earlier, as that's usually what happens in relativity field theory. But in this case, what controls the anomalous dimension is lambda times KF. More precisely, the momentum integration of the four fermion coupling along the form surface, which is dimensionless. And this is one, what controls the uh, anomalous dimension of this operator. And, and therefore, this being dimensionless acts like a marginal coupling. That's why we see low algorithmic IR divergences in this kind of interaction. Okay, so this is the reason why there's a mismatch between naive scaling analysis and the actual degree of IR divergence. So here's the uh, full low energy effective theory written for the for the uh, anti fermionic quantum critical matter. It's rather busy slide, uh, but um, the main point is that all the coupling constants are now promoted to coupling functions. So here, previously, I had a Fermi velocity along the direction of ordering vector one, but uh, in general, away from the hot spot, the Fermi velocity along the Q vector is not one. So it is function of momentum along the Fermi surface. So here, what I do is I have a full Fermi surface, okay? Then I divide the full Fermi surface into some finite segments. It's not size order of mu, but uh, with some size that is order of KF, okay? And each segment include one hotspot. So I still have a Fermi surface labeled by hotspot, but near each hotspot, I consider an extended region of Fermi surface, okay? I'm not, therefore I cannot do, I cannot linearize my dispersion. That's why Fermi momentum, so sorry, K sub N now represent the momentum uh, that labels the Fermi surface in each uh, segment, in each kind of big patch that includes nth hotspot, okay? And then VF, is a function of momentum along the Fermi surface. This is the momentum dependent Fermi velocity, which was one in the previous Haspa theory, but now this is general function of momentum. And this E, e of K um, is uh, um, uh, uh, this person that uh, specify the shape of the Fermi surface. So say near Haspa one, previously, for the linearized dispersion, I have some VK X plus KY for the, for the straight, locally straight from the surface, right? But now this, this little v, the nesting angle is function of KX, okay? So KX is again, near hotspot one is a momentum uh, that labels different parts of different points on the form surface, okay? So, uh, with the momentum dependent nesting angle, this in general describes some uh, nonlinear uh, 
uniform surface. Okay. So that's the general generalized uh, 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 kinetic term. So can I ask a question? Yeah. Um, so it seems like you're linearizing in KY, but not in KX. Is this sort of equivalent to only accounting for curvature nonlinearities, but not dispersion? That's right, that because, because I'm still interested in the modes near the form surface. I see. I, I don't have to go far away from the form surface. I see. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And also, um, the Yukawa coupling is now promoted to Yukawa coupling function that depends on the incoming and outgoing momentum of electron. Okay. And um, here I have not included the boson kinetic term because at this um, uh, IR fixed point in, in the IR, the uh, boson kinetic term uh, turns out to be irrelevant. The, the boson kinetic term is renormalized by the particle hole excitations. So bare kinetic term is subleading in the low momentum low frequency. So it doesn't matter whether we include, include it or not. That's really relevant. So we can drop the boson, bare boson kinetic term. And then finally, we include this four fermion coupling function. Okay, so this is, uh, this lambda describes the process where say fermion near hotspot four and three scatter into hotspot one and two, okay, with spin sigma four, sigma three with sigma one, sigma two, and then momentum again along the form surface. Of course, though, not all choices of this hotspot indices are allowed because of the momentum conservation, but there's a set of allowed channels you can, you can figure out. Okay? But mo most important thing is that um, this is, uh, I mean, the four form and coupling has dimension minus one, so that's why I have sticking one over mu here but we still have to include it within the renormalized of So, so something, uh, are K1, K2, K3, K4s here close to the um, hotspot or when you... So they, they, they can be far away from the hotspot. So they, they are momentum along, along the forming surface like this, mm -hmm. but they can be, uh, they don't have to be close to the hotspot. So those um, K3 plus K4 has to be close to zero? Is it BCS channel? Or yeah, that's, that, that, that's right. So in the BCS channel, say, um, say going back to here, say I can have a formula with momentum K near hotspot one, and I can have another formula with momentum minus K near hotspot five. Okay, and then they can, scatter into other pairs of hotspot with a zero net momentum. Okay. The question is that in your Lagrangian, do you restrict K3 plus K4 to be close to zero or you include all possible values of K1, K2, K3, K4? Uh, we, 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 don't, we don't necessarily restrict K3, K4 to be zero. This includes not only BCS channel, but also for the scattering channel and general fulfillment coupling as far as they satisfy the momentum conservation. And as far as all the formions are close to the form, they are, they are. But are all these um, marginal or non-marginal values close to the formion? They are irrelevant, this other regime besides BCS. I mean, BCS is the one that, um, is uh, marginally relevant and other channels are not relevant. Thank you. Um, sorry, just a follow up question. Um, how do you account for overcounting of the hotspots if, if the KIs can have arbitrary values? Yeah, that's why I said uh, uh, it's, I, I divide the full forming surface into some finite segments. I see, I see, I see, I see. Okay. But, but that would introduce some kind of KF dependent cutoff as well, right? From yeah, the so the, well, in, each, in each patch, the, the KN is bounded by some momentum cutoff along, I see. along the form set. I see. Okay, thank you. Okay, so this is the theory. 
uh, and uh, uh, a theory is characterized, characterized by coupling functions. Okay, so we have to consider space of coupling function. And our goal is to understand the flow of the coupling function and identify uh, fixed points and understand uh, low energy uh, physics at near at and near the fixed point. Okay, so here is some schematic diagram. So if we didn't have the uh, Yukawa coupling in the plane or in the subspace of the little v, the shape of the Fermi surface and Fermi velocity and the four formion coupling, we have the manifold of uh, Fermi liquid uh, fixed point, right? Which as we know has marginally relevant direction part of, um, um, for the superconducting state. This is the BCS instability. Uh, and this is logarithmic flow. But from this plane, this uh, Yukawa coupling is uh, strictly relevant so that we expect this, uh, the flow out of this plane will be very fast, right? Compared to the, uh, this uh, marginally relevant BCS instability, right? So reasonably, the theory will flow out of this plane to reach close to some manifold of, or isolate, we don't know for now, the some, some non-form liquid fixed point. And then we would like to then understand uh, the, the uh, physics near this uh, non-form liquid uh, fixed point. And in particular, uh, is this non-form liquid fixed point stable or unstable? If it is unstable, how unstable is it? against the superconducting instability, okay? So these are the thing that we would like to understand. So mathematically, uh, that can be answered by computing the beta, beta functional for this uh, coupling function, okay? The VK, the shape function, Vf, the Fermi velocity function, and Vkp, this Yukawa coupling function, and the uh, four fermion coupling function. Okay, and in general, the quantum correction are functionals of coupling function. Right, so that um, in general can make things very complicated. In other words, if you want to know the flow of coupling function at momentum k. In general, it may depend on coupling at different coupling, different momentum, sorry, right? It's a function or of function. However, um, uh, the beta functions and quantum correction that arise from small angle scatterings, turns out that for those quantum correction, the beta function are uh, at a given momentum depends only on the couplings evaluated at that momentum. So there is a sector where a great degree of simplification arises. This happens when the momentum transfer is small or momentum transfer is bounded by the energy scale, okay? But however, there are channels where this is not the case for, and that channel is say this, the BCS channel, right? There, if uh, external momentum is K and minus K, then this fermion can scatter into P and minus P. And there the momentum transfer is not bounded by the external energy. In that case, um, this doesn't happen, okay? In that case, uh, the beta function R is in general, from is expressed as some integration of uh, a coupling function, okay? Uh, uh, in this theory, fortunately, because of the theory solvable in the small nesting angle limit, you can compute the beta functional in a controlled manner uh, in the small nesting angle limit, okay? So idea is that in the limit that the nesting angle is small, uh, um, the four formion coupling that is generated by the Yukawa coupling also remains small. So therefore uh, you can compute 
all the calculation can be organized in, in, in powers of the nest anchor in, in this case. So full beta functional is very complicated. Uh, but let me just uh, show uh, the beta functional of the four fermion coupling in the pairing channel. Okay, so as, a, as an example, so here, this lambda, so this L is the logarithmic length scale. So this beta function describes how the four fermion coupling evolve, four fermion coupling function evolve as the length scale is increased. And it is the four fermion coupling that describes the scattering of fermion uh, in one five haspat to one five haspat. So, okay, so here I have a um, Cooper pair with momentum k and minus k near haspat one and five, right? And then they can scatter into one five haspat back to same haspat, not the haspat, sorry. In the same same segment, same same region uh, near the haspat one and five, with a different momentum, say p and minus p. Okay. So it, it, it is this one. Okay. So Cooper pair with momentum k minus k near haspat one and five is scattered into momentum p and minus p near haspat one and five with this with this external spin. Okay. And this minus one here means that it is irrelevant. I mean, it has scaling dimension minus one. That's what this means. And then this z minus z is the dynamical grid per exponent, okay? And the uh, um, uh, dy dynamical grid per exponent is a function of nesting angle here. This is something you can compute. And the uh, larger dynamical grid per exponent make the performing coupling effectively more irrelevant. Okay, that's why it's plus z minus one. And then this eta p, eta k, is the momentum dependent anomalous dimension of the fermion. Okay, so the expression is given by, it is function of the Yuka coupling and Fermi velocity function and momentum. Okay, so it's uh, at large momentum away from the hotspot, it goes to zero, but it goes to zero as some power law. Okay, so this is momentum dependent anomalous momentum. And this dilatation term uh, means that as you go to low energy, you have to rescale the momentum along the form surface simultaneously. Okay? So it's like uh, expanding universe, right? As you go to low energy, the momentum space, momentum is rescaled both in the direction perpendicular and parallel to the form surface. So as a result, the profile of the coupling function is stretched out in the momentum space, both in the K and P uh, coordinate. So that's the meaning of this term. And then here, second line is the uh, kind of the mixing, mixing of the four fermion coupling function uh, due to the spin fluctuation. So for example, here, the four fermion cou coupling that describe a uh, process where couple pair is scattered from one five to four eight haspat is mixed with a one five one five channel through the uh, spin fluctuation. It's like a, this is like a mixing. This is like a mixing matrix in relativistic field theory, right? That that we normalize the scaling dimension, but here. Because I have a continuously many gapless modes, my coupling is function of momentum along the forming surface. So therefore, the mixing matrix is also continuous function of momentum along the forming surface. Okay? So you can view this as a, a, a linear mixing between different four forming coupling function. Okay? And then here, a third line is the um uh it's a it's a uh yuka coupling that generate the four forming coupling even if you start with a theory with a zero uh four forming coupling uh four forming coupling will be generated through the yukawa interaction in some momentum dependent way okay 
And then the, the last line is the usual BCS term. Okay? So in the form liquid, you would have this kind of lambda square like uh, BCS term. Okay, so this is what the beta function null uh, look like uh, to the leading order in the small nesting angle. Um, and uh, um, here's a summary of those uh, beta functions. So, uh, so we have to think about the uh, space of coupling function, but uh, there, let us focus on um, the space uh, of the fermion coupling and the nesting angle, because that's where the important action happens, okay? Uh, and then here, uh, there's an interacting fixed point in the limit that the nesting angle goes to zero. And at the same time, the ratio between the Yuka coupling to the nesting angle is order of one. Okay, so it's kind of, a, uh, the, um, in the limit the nesting angle goes to zero, the Yuka coupling also goes to zero while the ratio is fixed to be order of one. And that's the, that's the infrared fixed point. And at this fixed point, the coupling functions are independent of momentum. The Yuka coupling and nesting angle is independent of uh, coupling. And at this fixed point, the dynamical critical exponent is one and the anomalous dimension of um, boson is one. And this, this, this uh, exponent is exact due to the reason that the small nesting angle expansion is exact asymptotically. So that represents this, this fixed point, okay? But this is rather fine-tuned fixed point because um, uh, bare theory uh, without fine-tuning have a non-zero nesting angle. So uh, we, we have to understand RG flow for bare theory whose nesting angle is uh, uh, non-zero, okay? Somewhere away from this, uh, this, this uh, uh, okay. And uh, away from the fixed point, if uh, nesting angle, bare nesting angle is non zero, uh, nest, nesting angle logarithmically flows to zero. However, uh, the, the Yuka coupling generates the four fermion coupling, and the uh, four, fermion, four fermion coupling actually flows faster than the nesting angle. And therefore, before nesting angle flows significantly in, in this uh, vertical axis, this four fermion coupling flows uh, much faster. This is what happens, okay? And therefore, uh, one can understand the RG flow in the subspace with a fixed nesting angle because the, you know, before nesting angle changes much, the four fermion coupling flows a lot faster. So therefore, we can uh, we can look at the flow within the subspace of the fixed nesting angle. Okay, then then it becomes much simpler. And uh, within a subspace with a fixed non-zero nesting angle, okay, it turns out that there is no um, emission fixed point. Okay. There is no uh, real fixed point. Rather, uh, that that means uh, there is actually a runaway flow. But if you extend your theory into a non-homogeneous theory, you are if you allow your coupling to be non-homogeneous, if if you allow your theory to be non-homogeneous in that enlarged space, there are actually fixed points. Okay, and at each at each value of the nesting angle v there are actually a pair of uh, fixed points related to each other by the complex conjugate or homogeneous conjugate. So that, that is represented by this red line here. Okay. This, this, uh, at each uh, nesting angle, there are uh, non homogeneous fixed points. And then as the nesting angle becomes smaller and smaller, this uh, non homogeneous fixed point get closer and closer to the uh, to the true homogeneous fixed point that arises at the, at v equals zero uh, limit. Okay. Of course, 
the real algae flow happens within this Hermitian space of Hermitian theory denoted by this uh, blue uh, plane, right? So, and then if your UV theory is somewhere here, then the, the theory flow through this, uh, this region and then and become uh, in the low energy limit, become large and attractive. That signifies uh, spot conducting instability, okay? But the flow becomes slower and slower as the nesting angle becomes slower and slower because you, you get closer to this uh, non emission fixed point and also the true, true uh, uh, fixed point. Uh, because the, you know, this is a functional RG flow, so it's rather hard to visualize. So it is um, useful to think about for the purpose of visualizing this RG, <coughs> it's useful to think about projected RG flow. So here, what you can do is, uh, if you have an infinite dimensional space of coupling function, you think about some finite dimensional subspace of coupling function, and then of course, if you start from some initial theory within this subspace, the actual RG flow takes you away from the subspace, right? But you can project your true RG flow into the subspace and you can examine the project RG flow. Then you can um, examine uh, the RG flow within some finite dimensional space of coupling constant for, for visualization. So here, I have uh, um, chosen my subspace to be the space of a four form coupling in the pairing channel with particular Cooper pair wave function. Okay, so basically I'm focusing on the channel where Cooper pair wave function is uh, fixed to be f of k. Okay, so k is the you know relative momentum of Cooper pair of momentum k and minus k, right? And um, uh, here I have chosen my f of k to have uh, some ir cutoff, small mom not ir, so small momentum cutoff epsilon close to the hotspot, so zero is hotspot, and then large momentum cutoff delta. And then I can I, I fix epsilon and delta, so low momentum and large momentum cutoff, and I consider Cooper pair with some shape. Uh, with this uh, range in this range of momentum, and I can project my RG flow to this uh, particular channel. Then, then you can visualize your RG flow. So here is what what it looks. Okay, so here, uh, um, and then of course the RG flow will depends on this parameter epsilon and delta, right? The uh, if I choose a different uh, epsilon and delta, I choose different channel. So then RG flow projected, RG flow is projected into different subspace. Okay? So here, um, if I say uh, project to the, to the um, channel uh, that, that ha has some, some, some choice of epsilon and delta, uh, and this is the real and complex value, imaginary value of that four form coupling in that channel, okay? So the Hermitian theory lies within this real axis here. And then indeed, in that channel, the fixed point arises away from the real axis. So this is a non Hermitian fixed point, the, the one that I mentioned, okay? And then um, there's a rotational RG flow near the non Hermitian fixed point. But on the rear axis, there's a runaway flow toward the uh, large and negative interaction. But interestingly, as I change the epsilon and delta, the, as I make uh, epsilon smaller, as epsilon is the lower, lower momentum cutoff of the pairing wave function, right? As I make the epsilon smaller and smaller, this uh, non emission fixed point of the projected RG flow approaches the rear axis. And then as some critical choice of that epsilon, this uh, non-omission fixed point collide on the rear axis. And then if epsilon is too small, the fixed point bifurcate out along the rear axis. So what happens is that as epsilon is decreased here, as I make this epsilon smaller and smaller, 
I include more and more hot electron. I include a Cooper pair made of electron very close to the hot spot. And as I mentioned earlier, the anomalous splendor of the electron become big near the hot spot. So therefore, um, in those channel that includes a lot of weight of uh, hot electron, um, large anomalous splendor prevents uh, spot conducting instability in, 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 in such channel. Okay. In other words, electrons are too incoherent to becoming to 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 become unstable against uh, pairing. Okay. So so this is interesting kind of uh, uh, dependence on the weight of husband. Of course, there are all these channels exist simultaneously in this uh, functional in the in the space of coupling function. So there always exist channel with a runaway flow. So therefore the system is eventually unstable toward the superconducting state. But that instability happens in some specific channel. It doesn't happen in the channel that includes uh, too much weight of hot electron. Okay. And uh, here, this is the, just the point that this uh, non-homition fixed point become closer and closer to the rear axis as, you, as the nesting angle becomes smaller and smaller. Okay, so it is just a, uh, this point. As the nesting angle becomes smaller, closer to the, to the this xy plane, this uh, non-homision fixed point become close to the uh, space of homision theory. So that means uh, in the limit that the nesting angle is small, there is a bottleneck of IG flow in this uh, uh, in this region. Okay. It, 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 this is the bottleneck here, right? So uh, if you if your UV theory is on this side of the coupling function, then it takes a lot of RG time to flow through this bottleneck region. Okay, so you can imagine that uh, there's some large window of energy scale where the physics is controlled by nearby non-homission fixed point. And that actually controls in the limit that the nesting angle is small, this bottleneck controls the, um, uh, the normal state properties and also the TC for superconducting instability. So, and this is how, that's why in the, as the nesting angle becomes smaller and smaller, the TC becomes smaller because the, it takes longer scale for the theory to to uh, uh, escape that that mechanism, and then, as is known from all your work, um, indeed the most unstable channel is the spin singlet D wave channel. Maybe what is new in this in this regard is that uh, with this functional RG, we can we can uh, pinpoint the precise momentum dependence of the channel that become most unstable. And also um, uh, it will be um, um, interesting to check uh, this, uh, uh, how, how, the, how the TC uh, is controlled by the nesting angle in this theory. And, uh, and then if all the theory flows to the spot conducting state while the theory is in the, in the bottleneck region, um, uh, you can ask what is the normal state property. So here, um, here I'm plotting the exponent with which the imaginary part of the spectral function scales with the frequency. Okay, so this, if this is in the form liquid, this exponent is um, two. That's the kind of uh, um, scattering rate, the, the, the the inverse of the uh, uh, lifetime of, of quasi particle. Um, and the, here I'm plotting this exponent as a function of uh, momentum along the form surface. So this is at the hot spot. And, as, as we, and then this is the energy scale. Okay? And then right at the hot spot, if you're sitting right at the hot spot, then at all energy scale, you have non form liquid behavior in that. The, the, um, 
the spectral function scale with the frequency with the exponent um, close to one here. But if you are away from the hot spot at, and go down in energy, at high energy, the electron is strongly coupled with the uh, fluctuation and exhibit non to behavior, but below certain energy scale, it, uh, it recovers the uh, uh, form liquid behavior. But as you get closer and closer to the hot spot, the decoupling happens at lower and lower energy scale. You can imagine that uh, strictly speaking, quasi-particles are well-defined away from the hot spot. The quasi-particle weight become very small as you approach the hot spot. And indeed, that is the case here. This is the quasi-particle weight in the zero energy limit plotted as a function of momentum along the form surface. Then there's some universal momentum dependence with which the particle weight uh, decays to zero. And here on the left panel, uh, this blue line represents the, the shape of the renormalized form surface. Okay? So if you solve the beta functional for the uh, little v of k, the shape function, uh, in the low energy limit, it approaches some universal form that only depends on the uh, bareness and Okay, so um, in summary, um, so um, the field theory for metals um, should include the um, uh, all gapless mode around the forming surface in general. And um, in this theory, because, uh, because of the scale associated with the size of the funny surface, the usual notion of renormalizable field theory should be modified. In particular, uh, the four form and coupling, which is deemed to be relevant by power counting, actually is uh, relevant. And that can give rise to large angle scattering in validating the patch description at, uh, in the low energy. And uh, I talked about the uh, structure of the fixed point and um, that arises in, in this particular non form liquid state uh, uh, that arises near the anti fermionic quantum treatment. Okay, sorry for uh, going over time and thank you for your. Uh, can I ask a question? Um, yeah, sure. Uh, it, it's, uh, it probably wasn't obvious to me, uh, but is this functional RG um, sort of sensitive to whether or not the antiferromagnetic wave vector is not zero? Like, would it still give a controlled expansion, for example, if Q was zero, or do you need Q to be non zero? Yeah. So, okay, so I, I view this two issues as separate issues. Okay? Mm -hmm. In other words, the strong coupling problem mm -hmm. and, and the functional RG framework. So um, the framework itself is general. Mm -hmm. However, whether you can compute right. the quantum correction in a controlled manner right. depends on which theory we are looking at. And right. in particular, small nesting angle expansion doesn't work for other types right. of non So that right. part, the small nesting angle expansion part, right. is specific to this uh, anti-fermionic non -form liquid. I see, I see, I see, I see. However, uh, there are features that are common across different non -form liquids, such as the importance of four fermion coupling, right. and, um, the breakdown of uh, patch theory, due to the uh, spot conduct large angle scattering of, right. of, of spot conducting fluctuation, those are uh, uh, more universal. Right. Okay, thank you. If there are no more questions, let's thank uh, Sunsik again.
since he agreed to stay a little bit after the seminar for discussion. Okay. So sure, yeah, I'll stop the recording and then okay. whoever wants to stay can. So, so it's like actually, I had a, uh, another question on. Um, so, do your results suggest yeah. that 